welcome to my Food for Speed podcast, Olympic Edition Fueling Gold. We have talked about nutrition consult. We have talked about medical and labs. We have talked about metabolism. And now we're going to talk about the importance of body composition on fueling your athlete or personal needs. What is body composition? Well, it's a regular assessment to help monitor progress of your body composition, how much lean weight to fat weight you have, and refine the nutrition and um, training strategies to enhance you building bone, to enhance you gaining muscle and how to get there, to save time, to outperform your competitors. Body composition is always a touchy subject, but I need to know it. If you don't think it's good for your athlete to know what they weigh or how much body comp or how much fat to lean, that is okay. But I need to know the numbers because if I know how much lean you have at this age, I've done so many. I've done over, I've done over 20,000 bod pods. That's body composition. It is crazy that I will really do know what some kids need at age 10, 11, and 12 and further. I know what you need to be a major league baseball player. I know what it would take to maybe be the best swimmer or cross country or track athlete out there or other sports because what they do now guides that lean weight to you want to get there sooner. If you're supposed to grow, you want to get there when you're supposed to. You're supposed to gain lean when you're supposed to gain lean. And that's a competitive advantage. And it's so much fun to watch just even the Olympic trials right now. And I just tell people, I go, if you have dreams, it starts young because you have to use your body. It is the body. Your foundation is nutrition. It builds on top of this, but so many people don't put this as the foundation. It's an afterthought. It's when something's going wrong. You're not achieving what you want to achieve. So knowing body composition is important to know how to guide someone on where they need to go. I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk around. I'm actually in my office and here's some nice little food tips. And um, that is my bod pod. Okay. So it fits up to 500 pounds and seven foot two. So unfortunately for those that are over seven two, which there are some, especially in the uh, NBA, Nash, uh, you know, in basketball that they can't fit in that because they're just too long. But the NFL still use this as for their combines because 500 pounds and seven two, and you could be a kid in there. It is just air and two clicks. You sit still and breathe normal. And it's like sitting in the front seat of your car in idle with the vent on. It's ridiculously simple. I love it because you just sit there and it's very accurate. Now, this one only does lean weight to fat weight. DEXA, bone density, and does body composition. It will break down left arm and right arm and and, um, the whole body. Uh, in body, I do like in body. It's bioimpedance. You see it at a lot of places, but I will share with you what I've seen here is the more lean weight someone has, it tends to be off more. So if I'm working with a offensive lineman, I'm working with a major league baseball player because this has happened. They had an in body at their facility and it kept telling him he was lower in body fat. And he said, I'm not that low. And that's why he even came to me. And this validated, and he did even a DEXA at another state because that's how he was. Um, and that's, imp- uh, you know, so those sometimes they can be good for you. But if you're trying to get more accurate, then those are might be the devices you use. You can always use tape measurements. If you have no means around you, you, you are little in um, money. In my academy, you just do a tape measurement. And you could probably Google that on and find that and just get an idea. Again, it's still not as accurate, but this is insanely important for my goals. Why? What if you're losing lean weight? If, then that's not okay. You're supposed to not, you don't want to lose lean weight. You're want, if you're wanting to get leaner, lean weight is muscle. Now, lean weight is also everything but fat, but water weight, if you pooped, okay, that does fluctuate. But if you're going in the right direction, then you should be seeing the lean weight go up with the goals that we set forth. And then the nutrition matches that and the training matches that. I've seen it where we are not moving that much. Sometimes it's not nutrition. They actually need to add lifting or lift harder. 
Um, sometimes they're lifting too much, like they don't need as much lean weight. That's a rare case, but I've seen it many times and I'm going, hey, you're really in a great spot. You just need to maintain what you got. You don't need more. It is another piece of the puzzle that guides, but when they're young, this, when you come to see me or you work with somebody, this is what I talk about. It's not just about nutrition. And you come and I ask what do you eat and what and when, and even with the labs and the testing, I need to know where to go and I need to know what your potential is. I need to know where you could be when, and that's actually a possibility. An average female once in puberty can gain a fourth to half of a pound of lean weight a week if they do nutrition and training and sleep at the same time. Now, it doesn't always fall that. If you're in season, that's almost impossible. And for guys, when they're in puberty, it's, and I mean full-fledged puberty, 15, 16, uh, a half to one pound of lean weight a week if they do nutrition and testing and sleep at the same time. But again, if they're in season, they don't always gain that. They, your goal is to maintain. And sometimes my athletes will gain a little bit in the season, depending on who they are and what they're doing. But you just can't lift that hard. And some have to lift really hard. The more lean weight your sport requires, that is a lot of work. Here's been what changed my life forever. Uh, it was, um, I had a 12-year-old female who swam. She was nine, uh, sorry, she was five, one, around 95 pounds, somewhere in there. And she was just exhausted. She wasn't eating enough. She was eating about 1800 units of fuel. She needed around 28, wasn't eating enough protein at the right times. We did the initial body comp. Um, again, as parents, this doesn't mean they need to know it. Most athletes, if you just straight out ask them if they want to know their weight and their lean weight, they'll tell you yes or no. And I wish we would do more of that. We we kind of tiptoe with females in college versus most of the females want to know if they're losing muscle. And most will tell me straight to my face, I don't want to know my weight and I don't want to know my body composition. And that's okay. I need to know. Um, it's how we use the data. It does not go to the coaches. We they We do not shame people. We do not say, oh my gosh, or we say, how can we get lean or how can we get leaner and how do we get there? So if an average male, once in pretty, can put on 20 pounds of lean weight a year, it's a roadmap of time and people try to outskirt that all the time, but they usually can't. And the other thing is, is once that day or a week or a year is gone, you can't get it back. And so knowing now what your body can do, but going back to my swimmer, she came in here and her body fat was at a certain point. Just to let you know, we upped her fuel, got the right protein and the carbs and stuff 80% of the time. She was not perfect. The only thing that changed with her swimming schedule at age 12 was her nutrition. And she wasn't PRing her personal best. She, nine months in a row from the time she left this office, she had personal best. And then over time in that nine months, her body morphed. It put on 10 pounds of lean and lost 10 pounds of fat. That was not my intention. I was not trying to do that to a 12 year old, but she just slowly just kept getting leaner and leaner. And I go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I knew it made a difference, but at one millionth percent makes a difference on what we eat when. And that's a whole nother discussion how we can change healthcare costs. But to see a female morph in front of my eyes, but just eating 80% of the right fuel at the right times where her body just needed that material to put on the lean. And it just, then it just kind of, the, the body fat just kind of left. She still had body fat, but it was crazy at age 12. She grew about an inch and that's it to do that. So yes, your goal is to gain lean when you're supposed to. And it makes a difference from the time they're born and when um, and to get taller when they're supposed to because nutrition does make a difference. So body comp is a whole nother piece. How have I, a story for a male athlete, okay? Does it make a difference? 100%. 100%, especially if you're watching trials. I got my nice little swim caps because I have two swimmers. One is already qualified for the Olympics. One is trying to get there, but a great, great swimmer. And um, you have, they're tall. Look how, how much muscle they have, how lean they are. The ones that are getting there early, they're tall when they're supposed to be tall. I can't make you taller, but if you're slowing down growth, that slows down your, your potential to get to that goal. And then you're further behind. 
especially if you want to go to the Olympics, especially if you want to go to the Olympics or be an elite athlete. And then if you, um, you know, then you look at how they fuel and then they need to gain lean. And it 100% makes a difference And the sooner they start. And I'm just going to give you a side note. You want to be the next Katie Ledecky. You want to be the next Mrs. Walsh and all these athletes, or you want to be the next Caleb Dressel. It starts now. The next swimmers that I will predict that will even have a chance of keeping the United States up there and following the legacies of the swimmers and other athletes out there in whatever sport is females, especially it starts at age nine or it's 10, 11, or 12. That's when they start going through their major puberty and nobody helps them. They sit there, the males, when they go to eighth to ninth grade in the summer, if they're going into football, they start doing squats. And I mean, just like they do squats like this, mm, 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 right? They're not doing a machine. Then maybe they'll do a broomstick. But that starts then. Why aren't we doing that with our females? That usually should start from sixth to seventh grade. What are we doing? Private schools where I'm at, most of them do not have a strength coach. But my other private male schools have strength coaches, not my females. It's kind of on the wayside. We as a society, we as parents are not fighting. Why they are at other schools and male schools is because the it's an expectation and the parents fight for it. And as parents, we have to fight for it and we have to fight for our females. We have to fight for a lot of things, but we have to fight for our females especially because they get left and they're not maximizing when they're supposed to start doing body weight and a broomstick. And that will excel them to be stronger, to be leaner, more powerful, faster and get to their goals and dreams and, you know, beat the next, you know, we got women's basketball, pretty exciting, right? We got track, all these things happening. So please, it's so important. Why do we know, want to know body composition? Because it guides us in real time where you're at, how to possibly get there, what's working and what's not working on a like future basis, not every year, but continuously. So we know when to veer and what's not working and what's, what's changing so we can get you to your goals. And especially if you're an elite or want to be an elite athlete or Olympian, then this is where it's at because stop throwing spaghetti noodles out the wall and get the right advice and testing that will create a positive experience that will help them mentally because if they feel good, they will perform better. I kid you not, most of my athletes do better in school. And they might be, most of them do great, but they perform better in school. They feel better. They have more confidence and they're fueling more. And so it's so much more than what I'm saying, but body composition is huge. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Have a great and healthy day.